And while the international community might be silent, witnesses are not recounting the nightmarish visions they saw on that day. In that venue, we are bringing some of that testimony to you now, that of Natalie Sanandaji, a survivor of the Nova Festival massacre. Natalie, I hate to even bring this as the first question, but given everything we've just heard and all the denial that we're seeing, can you recount for us what you witnessed that day? On that day of October 7th, other than witnessing the rockets being intercepted overhead and hearing the shooting coming from behind me because we were being pursued, um, I had to witness people that I knew, people that I knew at the party getting shot down, um, friends that made a slightly deci different decision than I did when they were running later finding out that they didn't survive um, and weren't as fortunate as I was to have made it out alive. Um, as, as time is going on, even though we're getting further and further away from what happened on that day, it honestly only hurts more and more because every day I'm just hearing new stories of what people witnessed, what people went through on October 7th and stories of what these hostages have been going through since then. And with every story that's coming out from every hostage that's being released, it just makes me more and more worried for the people who are still there and what they're going through on a daily basis. While, while we're here and fighting a different fight, while we're here and trying to fight the fight of spreading the truth, they're still there and they're still truly fighting for their lives. I don't, I don't even want to imagine what most of them are going through. Since then, you've made it a personal mission to tell the stories and to confront deniers in the Western world that would try to equivocate or undermine the truth of what happened. I understand that you are in Germany right now making this sort of statement, making this sort of speech. Tell me what you've encountered in Germany and in other places in the West that you have tried to present this story. Honestly, so far, most of my encounters face-to-face -face with people who hear my story are very positive ones. It's people showing support, um, people who are in their own way also spreading the truth and spreading my story after they hear it. Um, I do feel that for some people it takes hearing the story from someone who was there to really care about it more. Um, and I've seen a lot of positive responses from world leaders, um, from leaders in the U.S. So that gives me a little bit of hope because really the thing I can hope for the most is that this will never happen again, that the world will not let this happen again to the Jewish people. Um, but obviously online, I'm not seeing a lot of positivity. Obviously online, when I see my interviews being posted, I see so much hate, I see so much negativity, I see so much denial, I see people justifying the killing of Jews simply because they are Jewish, and um, it's, it's very grim and upsetting to see. You talk about this being online. Do you believe that these these naysayers, the anti-Semites, the, the liars, the equivocators, do they have any real power or are they simply voices on the internet and next to that, the impact that you're having is going to eclipse that? I don't know how much power I would want to give them. I do think the power lies in the school system and a lot of what's happening online, I'm seeing that it's a lot of the younger generation, for the most part, who seems to be misinformed and confused to what the conflict is actually about. And a lot of that is because of the school system. So I wouldn't necessarily say these people online with all of their comments have that much power. Obviously, when they come to the streets and obviously when they threaten the lives of Jewish people every day out on school campuses and just in public settings in general, yes, that that does mean that they have a power and that they're instilling fear in another group of people that, so they do in a sense have a power. Um, but it's good to see that the people that I've been speaking to who are in actual places of power, whether it's in the government um, or on news channels, that they seem to be on the side of humanity. And that's what's most important. Well, I'm optimistic that you are correct and that the most 
of people out there are, as you said, on the side of humanity. Natalie, thank you so much for sharing your story, as hard as it is to do so, but it is a story the world needs to hear.